Hey folks, this is Kalani. We just managed to full clear the horrific vision of Ogremar on our first try this week, so I wanted to give you a bit of a walkthrough on what we did and how we managed it. We're running a Havoc Demon Hunter and a Holy Priest. Definitely not the most optimal setup, ideally you would want to run double DPS if you only have two players. Honestly, running a healer in a group of two might actually be harder, or at least slower, than just running so solo depending on your class, but we do alright with what we have. I'm not sure Shadow Priest would speed things up too much in the long run, so here we are, just us two against the horrific vision of Ogrimmar. Before you attempt a full clear of your horrific vision, I would encourage you to unlock the elite extermination talent in the Titan Archive. It's fairly late in there, just three from the end, but it makes such a huge difference. When you kill an elite, your party gets 200 sanity back. I'm not sure how it scales with a group of five, but while we were duoing this content, we both get the full 200 sanity back, so it's super, super useful. One thing that I can't stress enough is you should never try to just go through the trash pack by pack. Try to pull as much as you can handle, and you should run with some strong AoE talents, trinkets, or essences to help you chunk through the trash. A lot of it doesn't do that much damage, especially when you're solo, so you're probably able to handle a lot more than you realize. The trash is also where you'll be spending a lot of your time, so the quicker you get through it, the faster you get through your run. We pulled almost the entire room here. If you don't fancy that big of a pull, I would suggest taking the entire right side of the area and take it in the same place. The real key here is where we take them to. This house on the right allows you to line of sight all the casters so they come to you instead of just sit at range casting as much as they want. I want to be able to find a different LOS spot really because this house can mess with your camera quite a lot, but it works well enough for now. We actually messed up here and got stunned and AoE feared, so keep an eye out for that. The honor guards are the ones will be CCing you, so try and avoid it, stun them if you can, and try to interrupt their horrifying shout. Blast them all with whatever AoE cooldowns you have. You can see a focusing iris laser decimates almost all of them here, and then we just have to clean up the rest. Try to line of sight cleanly so the shamans are part of the big ball of mobs instead of off to the side. We messed that up a bit too. After that, we head straight up to the right and enter the drag area with Garona. We pull this first pack into the miniboss, and I would recommend using a few cooldowns to get through this quickly. This chap can drain your sanity quite fast if you aren't too good at dodging the shadowy swirls on the floor. When he's dealt with, talk to Garona. The great thing about running with an extra person is that they can stay behind for this kind of RP thing while someone else goes ahead. If you're running solo, you can kill a pack or two and go back to Garona, or just wait for Garona to get up. It's worth noting, that if you need to eat or anything like that for a, a buff food or just to get some health back, this is a great time and any time where there's RP, that's a really good time to do anything that's going to be downtime related. In this next area, you need to watch out for Dominators. You can see I keep him targeted and interrupt his cast to get him to follow, and I stun his Touch of Abyss cast. That one single spell, Touch of Abyss, can destroy your run faster than anything else in here. You can't let them cast it at all. Nuke down these next packs as quickly as you can. Don't forget the named mob back here like I did. That slowed us down a little bit for sure. When those mobs are dealt with, be sure you're standing near one of the entrances you need to clear to save some time, get the rest of your buildings checked out, and head on over to the boss. You want to save a few strong cooldowns for this chap because he's a huge pain in the rear. If you are quick enough, you can strafe around his void torrent to avoid it, but it is pretty difficult. But for the most part, we just eat it and get back to blasting his face off. Some potions would be handy here. Almost anything that could increase your throughput is great, honestly, but I would probably Probably save lust for later. Just try to blow him up as quickly as you can.
After you've dealt with him, we move into the Valley of Honor to the right. This is the first lost area, so we need to try and get through this as quickly as possible to save our sanity. But I do make a huge mistake here. Don't pull this area unless you're a group of five, not all at once at any rate. If you're playing solo or as a duo or anything small, take Misha first and get her out of the way before you go on to the two large Akia enemies. They stun, they have nasty AoE abilities, they drain your sanity, and overall we just wasted a huge amount of time because I tried to pull too much. We would have gotten through this so much faster if we dealt with them separately and continued after that. The madness effect can really mess you up in here too, so be careful of that. We have the annoying circle of purple clones right now, so when your screen goes purple, stop moving for a few seconds to let the clones spawn, then move out of the opening. We took the next few packs a bit slower to not make the same mistake, and it went a lot smoother. We used our first orb just before these mobs and made sure to pull them right after the orb gets placed. Killing stuff while you regain sanity will always be faster in the long run, so always try to fight on top of your sanity orbs. Just be careful of the headbutts from the big fat Akia things, they'll knock you all over the place, so it might be a good idea to have your back against a wall if you're really struggling with them. The only other dangerous thing in here is the green swirls, they'll drain your sanity and deal some nasty damage, so be careful to avoid them whenever you can. It's probably worth just taking a swirl instead of running into your clones though, getting disoriented for a few seconds could kill you pretty quickly. When you get up to Rexar, try to have some cooldowns available. You really don't want to be fighting him for very long. Interrupt and stun the boar ants whenever you can and cleave them down. If you're not super confident in your burst, I would recommend you kill the pigs first because they'll drain your sanity and knock you around. Having some potions here is a great help. And when the ghastly shah thing starts spawning when he gets low health, just focus on Rexar and burst him down. I've seen so many people try to dodge around the shah and they end up just killing themselves because they make the fight last longer than it needs to be. After Rexar is dead, take the totem back to the start. The totem is always better than running because your sanity drain is paused during the flight and we want to head to the left area next. If you didn't kill the trash earlier in the first pull, try to clear the rest of this trash in as few pulls as possible. I think I'll try to include this trash pack in the mass pull at the start in future visions, just to get rid of it earlier. I hate killing one trash pack at a time, it's really not worth it. Open up the left side and drag these four mobs onto the mini boss. This one shouldn't give you too many issues, just try not to get knocked around too much because that will end up wasting time. I would save at least one cooldown for this guy just to get him out of the way quickly. When he's taken care of, we're going to skip the corrupted area that he unlocks for now. The roleplay wastes time, so we really don't want to just stand here and do nothing, and we can quickly come back to finish it after the lost area, so it's time efficient. This lost area is actually fairly quick. You have to kill monsters until the objective bar gets to 100%. This requires almost every mob in this area.
We needed to pop a sanity orb fairly soon after entering, so we put one on the hill here and pulled all the mobs around us. This worked out quite well, as long as you dodge the shadow swirls, there's nothing too dangerous in these packs. The focusing iris at rank 3 is fantastic, because it lets you deal a bunch of damage while still being able to move, so I would highly recommend that major essence if you aren't using it already in visions. It took a bit longer to tidy up these mobs than we really expected, so in future runs we'll probably try to figure out a nicer area to line of sight them, or maybe even pull them with one of the mini bosses. There's one group in here that you shouldn't pull, it's the one by the big totems with the two dominators. You really don't want to play with two dominators, if you can avoid it, so we just clear everything else. The trash by the bridge has one dominator, so do be careful of him. Again, one stun can end your key super quickly. The rest of this trash really doesn't do much, as long as you keep up the AoE DPS, you should be able to nuke it down easily enough. The mini boss on this side of the bridge spits out blood pools, just move out of those whenever you can and keep the damage rolling. The mini bosses in this area really aren't too bad to take down, they just take a little bit of time. Thankfully they're not too dangerous though. On the other side, with all the tents, there's another mini boss you need to kill. He will throw you around and try to jump on you a lot. Just move out of the big swell after he throws you so you don't take damage, and don't cast while he's doing his shout ability because it will interrupt you and lock you out of your spells. He's definitely more annoying than dangerous, but he's worth 25% for the objective bar, so be sure to take him down. This might be the mini boss that we tried to include in one of the earlier trash packs, but I think it's going to be kind of difficult with him throwing you around a lot, so maybe we'll just take him on his own. I would definitely recommend not taking him with any other trash packs if you're already starting to struggle. After you get to 100%, the actual boss for this area will spawn on the pathway back. He spawns ants that you need to cleave down quickly. He has a large ring of orbs that shoot outwards, so try to stay close to the boss at all times. And he also does a big line stun in front of him called Defile Ground. When he starts casting this, move to the side so you avoid the stun. When he's dealt with, don't take the totem, we're heading back to the previous corrupted zone that we unlocked already. This will be super quick, so even if you only have one orb left, you should be able to get through this area and kill Thrall without too many issues. We like to pull several of these groups at once and blow them up with laser beams, because laser beams are always fun. Just be careful of the Tormentor spell called Mental Assault. That will truck you if you let them cast it. Interrupt them, CC them, stun them, anything to stop that cast. I even use Imprison on my Demon Hunter to get another Interrupt in. Destroy the totems and work through the rest of this trash. As long as you interrupt the Tormentors and don't stand in purple stuff, you shouldn't really have any issues here. Nothing that can really kill you if you're quick on your toes. This area also has one of the easier mini bosses, just nuke him down and collect your golden orb whenever he pops it out of you. Dodge the waves as best you can and just make sure you have enough sanity left to take on Thrall. We can usually kill the end boss with 400 sanity at this point, but with a full clear Thrall is going to have a lot more abilities to contend with. 
when you get down to Thrall, take a moment, make sure you have everything that you need, maybe drums, potions, get that second pot in if it's on cooldown. You want to kill the boars as soon as you can, they'll cause a lot of problems if you don't take care of them early. He'll do his typical shadow abilities, he will have the bowl from the drag mini boss, the golden orb thing from the spirit mini boss, and the defiled ground line slam stun in front of him that leaves patches of void on the floor. He's definitely not easy with all of this combined, but just stay alert and try to take him down as quickly as you can. We waited to get a second potion in here and we also used drums for bloodlust. Every small thing adds up when you have a time limit like this so be sure to bring anything that will help you. We ended up starting the fight with about 850 sanity and we had about 300 left when he died so it was pretty close but we still had some time left in the bank. We also made quite a few mistakes in this run so it was by no means perfect and I think soloing this might actually be easier than running as a duo with one hero healer. Running double DPS would certainly be faster if you rotated cooldowns between packs. We're going to try running some more with Nadara using the formless void to copy the focusing iris laser and seeing how that goes, if that really improves anything in the grand scheme of things. This is by no means a perfect run, but I just wanted to show you how you can full clear the Ogremar Horrific Vision this week if you play quickly and play smart. Now we can start collecting masks and getting into the real hard stuff. Have you tried to go for the full 5 chest clear yet for Stormwind or Ogremar Visions? How have you been progressing through Horrific Visions as a whole? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.